Honorable Marvin Gonzalez, Minister of Public Utilities, uh, Ambassador Peter Cavendish, head of the delegation of the European Union to Trinidad and Tobago and other members of the diplomatic corps, as well as the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Energy and Energy Industries, uh, Mrs. Penelope Bradshaw Niles, uh, Mr. Gerard Noto, resident representative of the UNDP, my own uh, staff member, uh, Mr. Kishan Kumar Singh, head of the Multilateral Environmental Agreements Unit at the Ministry of Planning and Development, as well as Mr. Hayden Romano, who is the CEO of the Environmental Management Authority, members of the Energy Chamber, especially invited guests, members of the media. I stand before you today to speak to an issue that is already of critical importance and relevance in our quest for sustainable future, which is developing and maximizing our renewable energy resources, in particular wind energy, and more specifically offshore wind energy. As we navigate the challenges posed by climate change and strive to transition to clean renewable energy sources, understanding and harnessing the power of the wind becomes increasingly crucial. Wind energy has emerged as a promising solution to meet our growing energy demands while mitigating greenhouse gas emissions. The vast potential of wind resources in our offshore areas offers a unique opportunity to tap into clean and virtually limitless source of power. However, to fully unlock this potential, we must undertake comprehensive and accurate wind resource assessments. Wind resource assessments forms the bedrock of any successful energy project. It involves a meticulous examination of wind patterns, velocities, and turbulence characteristics to determine the energy yield and feasibility of a specific location. By gathering data on wind behavior, we can make informed decisions about the optimal placements designed and operation of wind farms, and therefore by extension, the investments required. These investments will not only accelerate the transition to a clean energy future, they will also create new job opportunities, spur economic growth and enhance energy security. Furthermore, with respect to offshore wind, it has the potential to revitalize coastal communities and transform them into hubs of renewable energy innovation and expertise. By harnessing the full power of the wind, we can generate substantial amounts of clean energy, reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, and make significant strides in combating climate change. As a mature oil province with diminishing resources, as well as the shifting world paradigm towards less fuel-based economies, we must take proactive steps to ensure our future energy security and maintain our economic viability as well as competitiveness. Moreover, as Trinidad and Tobago also embarks on a trajectory for developing green hydrogen and decarbonizing our industrial sector, the potential for offshore wind energy becomes an even more important in providing the requisite energy capacity to power green hydrogen, as well as decarbonizing our power generation. As many of us will know, Trinidad and Tobago has a high per capita energy consumption of 5,911 kilowatts hours per capita when compared to the world average of 3,081 kilowatts hours per capita using a 2019 reference year. Nearly half of our households have a consumption level that is on par with the North American households and nearly three times the global average. Trinidad and Tobago's electricity generation is also almost solely dependent on natural gas, consuming 8% of the total natural gas produced in the country. Total greenhouse gas emissions in 2018 were estimated at 41 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. These are compelling statistics and they reinforce the need to accelerate energy transition. Achieving an accurate wind resource assessment is a complex and multifaceted process. It requires the deployment 
of advanced technologies such as meteorological flows, floating, lidar buoys, and satellite-based remote sensing. These tools also allow us to collect data on wind speed, direction, and variability, as well as other crucial environmental factors. By analyzing this data over extended periods, we can establish reliable wind resource maps, which serve as a foundation for offshore wind project planning. However, at the same time, we must not underestimate the challenges that come with offshore wind resource assessment. The harsh marine environment, logistics, complexities, costs associated with data collection, as well as the required time frame for data collection can pose significant challenges. Addressing these challenges requires collaboration between industry, government, and research institutions, as well as continued advancements in technology and data analysis techniques. Trinidad and Tobago was able to partner with the delegation of the European Union to access the EU-funded Sustainable Energy for All program, which provided technical expertise in developing a draft strategy for wind energy generation in Trinidad and Tobago. I understand that in the presentation to follow, we will become privy to what can only be described as exciting and promising news for Trinidad and Tobago. Based on the information that you will be expected to receive, it seems promising that Trinidad and Tobago has the potential to harness electricity from the wind and quite possibly in significant amounts at that. This is of course cautious optimism on my part because getting to that point will involve further studies and more tangible assessments that would attract investments, but we are definitely one step closer. On that note, I'm advised that officials of the EU delegation are already partnering with their counterparts from the Ministries of Planning and Development, Energy and Energy Industries, and the Ministry of Public Utilities to assist with the next step. It would be remiss if I didn't mention our participation in the EU's Global Climate Change Alliance Plus project, which has assisted us in achieving our international commitments the Nationally Determined Contribution NDCs, where we applied those resources specifically to increase the adoption of solar energy. Through this initiative, we have already handed over four domestic scale rooftop solar installations with eight more to come in the next few weeks and the first commercial scale ground mounted installation at the Piaco International Airport that was mentioned by the chair this morning. We are therefore moving ahead in maximizing our renewable energy potential through these various initiatives. I therefore would like to take this opportunity to thank Ambassador Peter Cavendish and the European Union Delegation Office in Port of Spain for the continued collaboration in the area of sustainable energy. I give special thanks also to the consultants, Mr. Stephen Badry and his team, as well as the program managers at, San, at Stantec for the quality work that has been done. This lays the foundation to move on to the next steps that I have just identified, and we look forward to what the future may bring. Before I close, I'd just like to share what was one of my uh, cherished opportunities, and that is on the invitation of the then Chancellor and Angela Merkel, together with several ambassadors to visit both onshore and offshore wind turbines and to have the opportunity to actually speak with persons who working, developed, and to understand um, the challenges that were faced and therefore um, coming home now and realizing that this is a project that can actually materialize is something that I look forward to. In conclusion, uh, wind resource assessment for wind energy is a vital undertaking that paves the way for a sustainable future. By harnessing the power of the wind, including on our oceans, we can diversify our energy mix, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and drive the transition to clean renewable energy. Let us work together to unlock the immense potential of wind resources, ensuring a greener and brighter future for generations to come. I thank you. Thank you.